My name is Jeffrey Kahn, and I'm the host of Digital Oil & Gas, the podcast that looks at the impact of digital technology on the oil and gas industry. If you want to discuss this week's topic further, or just stay in touch, you can always reach me at Jeffrey Kahn on Twitter or at JeffreyCann.com. This podcast is entitled, Survey Your Organization for Digital Readiness. How do you know if your organization is ready to embark on changes enabled by digital innovation? Well, why not go collect some data? As I have described in earlier podcasts, the usefulness of a digital strategy is at least partially measured on how able an organization is to implement the strategy's recommendations. There's little point in developing an elegant, sophisticated, and disruptive game plan only to discover that the organization doesn't think management is serious or the team lacks the capability to execute or the changes so threaten the workers that they slow walk it forward or refuse to go along. As Peter Drucker reminds us, culture eats strategy for breakfast. As you work on a digital strategy, you need to get a handle on how ready your organization is to cope with the outcomes of a digital strategy, and for this, you need data. You need to know if there is a difference between how managers think about change versus the troops. Sometimes managers who are measured on high reliability and minimal upsets can feel pretty ambivalent about introducing digital innovation. It just feels like more work. And sometimes the troops can see change as simply more work, same pay, or big brother is watching me, or automation is after my job. They too can be pretty cynical about any kind of change. And how about between the corporate office, whose people are possibly more exposed to conversations about digital innovation, and field operations? Sure, there are probably lots of opportunities to apply digital solutions to corporate work, but most, if not all, of the really useful digital advances in oil and gas will originate in the field. And how about between different employee groups, such as technical, professional, and managers? You think that the technical and professional cadre are the most open and best aware of how digital changes are impacting the industry? But is that true? Frequently, their jobs are tightly coupled to specific technologies which they are loath to replace. And what about procurement, who insists that any digital innovation actually be implemented in the market already? And by the way, if it's already in the market, perhaps it's not that innovative. If there are significant differences in attitudes towards digital across your company, you need to craft some actions to help improve the adoptability of the strategy. But collecting data about attitudes involves reaching people who are widely distributed across big geographies and lots of field offices. The assets run around the clock, which requires multiple shifts of workers just to keep the machine running, making it hard to reach everyone through interviews or focus groups. Just getting to the field can be a multi-day journey. Well, since you're developing a digital strategy, why not conduct a digital survey of the company? Survey tools are ubiquitous, readily accessible, inexpensive, and robust. And as my research analyst pointed out to me, the Simeon twins, MailChimp, and SurveyMonkey seem to have a corner on engaging with lots of people. So why not start there? Your first challenge is the overall design of your survey. How long, how detailed, how much time to complete. Shorter surveys can yield higher response rates, but you collect less data. Anonymous surveys can give you higher quality responses, but you can't follow up with anyone directly. At the very least, set up your survey so that it is responsive, meaning it works reliably on any phone, tablet, or browser, and can be completed anywhere. The first data you need to collect are the characteristics of the respondents to allow you to segment the data. It's been my experience that there are meaningful differences between head office and field offices, workers and managers, technical and professional, and even between specific assets and sites. For example, corporate might rate digital highly and the field might rate it as irrelevant. The average is then misleading. At least one question should help you situate the respondent by location. Your second question should ask the respondent to self-select into an employment category. And in a perfect world, you could even use the job categories that are defined by your human resources department. There is little point asking detailed questions about digital's potential if the respondents don't really understand what digital means. Your third question should aim to set a baseline of awareness of the topic of digital. Segmentation then lets you see if some parts of the company are ahead or behind in digital awareness, which in turn shapes the interpretation of other responses. There are a handful of digital innovations that are dominating the broader conversations about digital in oil and gas. 
you need to see if your company is participating in these conversations. So test the awareness of the small number of digital technologies on, say, a five-part scale. No awareness, some awareness, highly aware. The technologies that I recommend include phone apps, cloud computing, Internet of Things, blockchain, analytics, artificial intelligence, robots, and augmented reality. You also need to get a handle on the sense of urgency for your strategy work. If there's no urgency, the digital strategy likely struggles to get legs. To gauge urgency, ask how people perceive the relative position of the company against the competition. You don't really need to define the competition in any robust way, i.e. naming specific companies. Instead, assume the respondents already compare themselves to others in the market on a casual basis. There's little point in deluding yourself that your digital strategy will work if the employees actually believe the company is not receptive to employees' suggestions about improvements enabled by digital. One of your questions should test to see if the company is perceived to be receptive to change. This question is best framed on a scale that ranges from zero receptivity to leadership is highly receptive. Spend enough time mucking around in digital and you see opportunity everywhere. But is that true for everyone? You don't want to bias the survey results by leading the witness, but it is sensible to see if the respondents in general have any preconceptions about how digital might impact the company. Most people are aware of how digital innovations have been disturbing other sectors such as retail, the media, banking, gaming, entertainment, and transportation. So ask a question about impacts using a scale of 1 to 5, ranging from digital will have no impact on us to I see lots of potential. Digital innovations have different impacts on different businesses, but which ones matter most for your digital strategy? I recommend asking where people believe the performance gap is greatest or where the opportunity is most easily captured. Here are some of the ways that digital helps, and again, rate these on a scale of no value to high value to see which ones stand out. Improve the quality of our information, lower our costs of production, improve the utilization rates of our assets, improve the productivity of our assets, help us make better decisions, transform our processes, automate repetitive tasks, help accelerate cash collection, and improve the quality of services we receive. You also need to know what sorts of barriers or blockages are in the path of future digital adoption. Armed with that knowledge, you design into your roadmap specific tactics to help overcome these barriers. Barriers could be worded either as positives, we need training, or negatives, we lack awareness. Here's a positive version. We need training on digital innovations. We should set aside work time to explore digital innovation. We need to improve our data quality. We should make digital innovation part of every job. We should have a budget for digital innovation. We need to recruit for digital skills. Or we need to improve our track record at introducing change. You need to know if the respondents are prepared to place a priority on digital adoption. So frame a question on how much of a priority your team places on this topic. Again, a scale does the trick with answers between 1, don't waste any time on digital, to 5, we should transform the company. Last but not least, your team undoubtedly has very specific use cases and ideas about where digital tools can make a difference, but unless you ask, they won't reveal. The very last box on the survey is a write-in comment box to pick up any suggestions or specific examples that the team thinks should be investigated. So in conclusion, if you're asked to help out to develop a digital strategy for your organization, your efforts will be enhanced if you base it on real data. Consider using a digital survey to support your efforts. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe to the show. You can find Digital Oil & Gas on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And please tell a friend about the show. If you have a minute, please leave a review and a rating on iTunes, as that helps others find the show along with other great content. You can follow Jeffrey on Twitter, at Jeffrey Can, or on LinkedIn. Also, look for Jeffrey's new book, entitled Bits, Bites, and Barrels, The Digital Transformation of Oil and Gas, on Amazon and other fine online bookshops. Thanks for listening to this episode of Digital Oil and Gas. The podcast returns next Wednesday, so tune in then.